All right, folks, it's uh, AD here again. Uh, Going to do another video for you on utilizing uh, probably my favorite capture software and my favorite website for gathering repeated data, whether I'm doing it locally here in Arizona or whether I'm traveling or going on a road trip. Um, this is the k5vhx.net website. Uh, we're going to be using the RT system software in the second part of this, so I'm going to show you how to grab the data from here. All right, you end up with a Google Maps here that looks very familiar, but up here in this upper corner, you see a menu button. What we're going to do is click that menu button, and you can do a couple different things. One, I'm going to show you how to search for a repeater in an area. So we're going to click, we're going to put location, P-H-O-E-N-I-X, comma, A-Z. We're going to do a distance of 50 miles from Phoenix, and this is a cool feature is that you can filter in or out anything you want. So what we're gonna do, since I'm gonna use this, pretend I'm using this on my uh, Yaesu 8 uh, FT60, we're gonna get rid of everything that that radio doesn't work on. So two meter and 70 centimeter, and we're gonna go search. All right, you see here instantaneously, close to that, we have 198 repeaters showing up in the area within a 50 mile radius of around Phoenix. Again, with the old, um, with the uh, demo I did before, if you click on this, brings up the repeater information, tells you everything about it, show coverage map of that as well. So because it's high in a mountain peak, you see that it's uh, really, really pretty interesting. And that's what I like about k5ehx.net. It's gonna show you the blind spots in here because of this peak. It's going to show you the areas where the coverage is good and areas where the coverage is going to be spotty. So you can see here the level. Um, if your antenna is, um, you know, 10 feet above uh, the ground, AGL is above ground level. So very cool feature about uh, k5ehx.net is you can get that uh, coverage map. So we're going to go back to this screen, close this window. Now, one of the cool things about this is that you can go back to menu. And if I hit the little export button here, download the current search, it's going to take all of these 198 repeaters and load them into a format that I can use in a different software. So we're going to hit download. And you can see here the different um, formats that you can use. Um, I use and I love, it's expensive, but it's worth its weight in gold, is the RT system software. You can also do some generic chirp stuff here. Um, but we're going to do RT today, so I'm going to click download. It's going to I'm going to save the file. It's going to end up in uh, it's going to say k5vhx repeater search tab. It's always generic, um, so I'm just going to save that. All right, it's up here in Mozilla. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to do a second feature with this, and if I'm going to drive from Phoenix to San Diego. I hit the search along a route function. And this is way cool. So we're gonna do the N-I-X A-Z to S-A-N California. First thing you do is you draw the route. So, and actually uh, last uh, uh, Labor Day weekend, um, I actually took this trip. I was doing some tours along the uh, West Coast doing some product demos, and I drove this whole thing, and it works great. So now that you draw the route, you hit the search function, and it's going to populate repeaters that you're going to find along your route. You see here, there's going to be 174 of them. That's a really cool function if you're traveling. The cool thing about the uh, Yezu FT60 it's got a thousand memory channels and 10 memory banks. So you can segregate these things into 10 different banks. Um, so you could take and put my local repeaters for Phoenix area that we did in the first search in bank one and bank two put in all my travel stuff. So if I'm going traveling to Phoenix, you can do that. Or for Phoenix to San Diego, you'd load this in and cl click all these. And I'll show you that in the RT system software, identify these as bank two. Similarly, when I go on business trips, I fly somewhere, I'll take the handheld with me, I'll download the repeaters from that site, DC, Virginia, Tampa, Florida, you name it. Um, and I have uh, all of the repeaters uh, instantly loaded in the radio, not instantly, but close enough. 
um, to do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pause this. I'm going to go open up the RT system software and show you how that one works. All right, folks, uh, this is uh, AD again with uh, part two of this uh, programming or radio using uh, the downloads out of the K5VHX.net repeater site. Uh, so what we're going to do here is to go grab the file that we imported or exported from K5VHX.net. Uh, it's going to be this one. It's a tab delimited file. And the cool thing about the RT system software is it comes with its own cable. So it's a proprietary cable, especially for their software. It works well. It's dedicated. Uh, they've scrubbed all the bugs out of it so you don't end up getting, um, you know, they sell you the right cable with the software. Unlike Chirp, which is free, you have to go buy the cable. And if you buy the wrong one, it can hose you up. So um, anyway, to the import screen, I've never had to check any of this as I imported the files. I just go ahead and send them into the radio by clicking next. Uh, this talks, it's a tab delimited file and you can see the number of columns up here. The next thing it's gonna do is it's gonna go select the headers for the columns. So the channel number and frequency are just uh, transferred up there. And this is what it's gonna be called on, on this spreadsheet up here. And then we're gonna click next again and when you import, you have the ability to select which repeaters. If you know one by looking at the comment list that's off the air, like this one here, you can deselect it so it doesn't get loaded to the radio. If you know they're changing uh, something on the repeater and you don't want to load it in there, or in this case here, I've downloaded some other frequencies that the FT60 won't grab. You could still monitor them, but it won't grab. So you could go in here and select out these 927s if you wanted. So that's up to you. And we're going to click finish and then watch what happens to the sheet in the background. It populates with everything. So you see all of the comments over here on the left hand side. Here you see the actual name and you can go in here and put your own name in if you want. Um, some of them are uh, you know, Thunderbird is a, a, a repeater, Cactus, Scottsdale, uh, ARA is the Arizona Repeater Association. They've got a bunch of different repeaters um, around the valley here. And uh, so you can add your own in, your own terms or your own uh, call signs for the repeater so that you know which one it is if you want, or you can just leave the default. Um, I'm a big fan of knowing the name of the repeater. Uh, and so I would go in there and change these files if I wanted to. So anyway, you've got them re uh, loaded in. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the data from the radio. And uh, before I do that, I'm going to open up a new file just to make sure that I don't do anything stupid. Um, and what I've done is tested this before. So I'm going to shut this one off. Uh, before I did the video. So this is the new file. Now I'm going to go get the data from the radio. So I'm going to get data from the radio. And this is specifically for the FT systems, um, uh, FT60, RT systems, FT60 software interface. And this is how you get it into the handheld is you press the monitor T call, T call key while you turn the radio on. You change the button on top till it says clone. You then press and release the FW key on the lower right hand side of the front of the radio. You verify that it says clone and then you press OK to begin. And then you press and hold the transmit push to talk key until you see the um, file actually start transferring. So now it's getting data from the radio. Uh, and this, like I said, is all the stuff from Seattle from my last trip a couple weeks ago. And this is what makes it so nice because I can save the old Seattle file. I can save a new file. Uh, if I'm going on a road trip, I can put that in there as to and from. So this is, I do this all the time to program this. And it takes me literally all of about 10 minutes to download new repeater data from a location that I'm going to be going to. So this is what it looks like from the Seattle trip. All right. So here we go. Those are all the Seattle repeaters. And you can see those guys, they don't have very many um, names on them. And there's no comments to speak of on their, on their repeaters. Um, and you noticed I opened up a new file. So it's, it imported that to that new file program. So if I were to take this tab where I downloaded the new repeater data from, uh, from K5VHX.net, and then downloaded from the radio when this is open, the radio would overwrite all of this. 
So that's why you always open a new tab when you're importing from the radio. Now, um, what I can do is send the data. So we're going to send this data back to the radio. And again, same type of thing. We're going to send it here. We're going to insert the cable. We're going to press the monitor key call key. And this is basically the same setup. We're going to turn it on. Verifies that it says we're going to turn it to clone F8. Um, we're going to press and release the FW key again. We verify that it does indeed say clone. We're going to press the monitor T call key to start the RX mode. It does say RX and now we're going to hit OK and now we're sending data back to the radio. So it's a large file so it's going to take a little while. So I'm going to show you another step here after this gets done loading to the radio. And one of those is how to use the bank um, in the RT or the uh, FT60 software. You notice I've got 10 banks up here. This radio has uh, a thousand memory channels, so that makes it very powerful. Something that the bail fangs don't do well is they've got very limited memories. And if they were to ever increase the memory to this range, um, that would make them a really ass kicking radio. But in this case, this is uh, uh, the FT60 is the old beater standby. I use it all the time. It's my go to radio for when I do all the traveling and everything. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you once this gets done how to change um, and how to store these in, in different memory banks and how to put uh, append files together so that I can have my Phoenix local one uh, in bank one and I can have everything else in bank two. So you can see it's a very large file but it goes in there just so wonderfully that you don't have to worry about programming by hand. And if you're on the road and you're going somewhere you can do this um, physically with a laptop so that makes it really handy. Okay, so I've uploaded it to the radio now and actually it's very good to go. Now, one of the things that you can do is, and I didn't do it on the beginning of this one, but say I want all of this data, which is all the Phoenix data, in bank one, which is what my normal process is. So I'm going to go down here, bank one. And RT is kind of funny. You think you should just be able to do shift, but you have to click the box up above and then click it here and highlight it. Right click, paste. Copy. Shift key right click paste and so now I've down I've loaded all of those into bank one now if I take my Seattle program and say uh, this is going into um, a different city and I'm only going to use part of these so what I want to do is if I take say the first let's say 40 for S and G's so press on the first one highlight the first bar Come down to 40, press the shift key, highlights all of that. I go copy. I go back to the Phoenix one. And now I come down to 200. Over here, right click, paste. Downloads just those 40 into there. And now what I do is I come over here to bank two, click that. It's highlighted with that little square. I go down to the bottom, press the shift key, at, oops, forgot, right click, copy, go down to the bottom, hold the shift key, press again, right click, paste, okay. So all of the first 199 are in bank one, bank two has all of the other ones. So what you can do is when you're going to the airport, I listen to bank one, once I get up to my location, I can switch the bank over and what I normally do is I just scan these banks as I'm driving along. Hit the up or down scan key and it just scans. So now if I want to scan, so if I go to Seattle and I want to scan those, 
I just switch the radio over to bank two and when it scans it will only go through these not all of these that are in there so as long as I keep my total of under uh, a thousand memory banks down here I'm good to go so I can put those in as many as 10 different banks so that's a great way to segregate this and then the same way that we did before you can upload that to the radio one of the things that you should do always is make sure that you save your files so save as and I'm gonna export this as say uh, PHX and this is 426 2015 uh, and that's the file that I'm going to save. That was the original one we imported. And then this one here, what I would do is go File, Save As, and go PHX Bank 1, SEA Seattle Bank 2, 4, 26. 2015. I always put the date on here because sometimes, um, not sometimes, all the time, you want to know what the latest and greatest one is because repeaters change, they go out of service, they change frequencies, things like that if there's some interference around. So I always have a tendency to label mine so it's very easy for me to read it. Uh, so Phoenix is bank one, Seattle is bank two, and that was the date I put it on. Now if I was going to do one for traveling, from Phoenix to San Diego it would be Phoenix hyphen San Diego and the date so and then you click Save and you see that saves that up there it's as simple as you can get for programming a radio using uh, the RT system software so uh, I like it much better than chirp it's simple friendly um, one of the things that is difficult to do is to export a file from this software into chirp because you've got to strip out like here where it says megahertz and kilohertz you can't have that in there for chirp you have to strip those out so a lot of the times you've got to come in here and strip out the the hertz symbols and things like that because chirp doesn't use that in here where RT does um, so there there you go folks um, hope you enjoyed it uh, let me know what you think in the comments and uh, we'll catch you on the next time I do another video don't know what it's gonna be yet but uh, I'll talk to you about that shortly